Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back, and I just wanted to come and run my mouth. Now, listen, we went live, and I had on the, um, uh, I was supposed to talk about uh, Naomi Campbell, and we was doing a whole bunch of carry, you know, and I think I forgot to talk about Naomi. So here we are, girl. So Naomi Campbell banned from charity role for five years after financial investigation. I know Tyra Banks is probably somewhere in a closet giggling. <laughs> so now, and, and Rihanna. <laughs> you know Rihanna probably over there. Girl, you know, Marie, you know Rihanna and Melissa are probably wearing Naomi low. <laughs> Why are you trying to be shady to Rihanna? They say you over there stealing, girl. <laughs> well, you got the nerve to be outside on the sidewalk with law, <laughs> Roach, trying to throw shade. <laughs> girl, at least that's what we thought. We thought they was throwing shade at Rihanna, and the whole time, girl, you was in, under investigation. <laughs> it's always somebody who trying to turn their nose up at somebody or try and read or shade somebody, girl, out here putting their hands in a cookie jar. So Naomi Campbell is barred from serving as a charity trustee for five years after uh, a United Kingdom watchdog group found evidence of financial uh, misconduct at the model's charity Fashion for Relief. The UK's Charity Commission released a report Thursday noting in a release that the charity was poorly governed and had an and had inadequate uh, financial management. Its investigation. Uh, investigation found the charity spent less than 9% of its earnings on grants and causes and that some of the charity's expenses were not reasonable. This includes a stay at a five-star hotel in security for Campbell. Um, they, she's 54. During an event at Cannes Film Festival in 2008, as well as spa treatments, room service, and purchase of cigarettes. <laughs> I said not cigarettes. You know, you got to be low down and dirty for you, for you to be using money that's supposed to be going towards an organization to purchase some cigarettes. Council sticks is what we call them back in the day. Spa treatments, a luxury hotel. Girl, you are supposed to be one of the top models of the world, girl. Wasn't you out here? Wasn't you out here um, with uh, Rihanna's baby daddy? Not baby daddy. No, not him. Girl, <laughs> the billionaire, the boyfriend. Who had the boyfriend first? Because I heard that's why the beef. I heard that's why it's a little beef, <laughs> a little side eye action going on with Riri and Naomi because they said that girl they they shared a man once upon a time. Now I don't know who had them first. Okay, but you know how y'all start getting over a little piece of penis, honey. Now quiet as this girl. <laughs> I can understand a billionaire penis. <laughs> okay. I can see how you might roll your eyes and stomp your feet and turn your head and talk about somebody with your homegirl. <laughs> okay. Now that's a different type of penis. <laughs> okay. The billionaire penis is different from the pookie penis. Okay. Anyways. Um, U.S. Today has reached out to Campbell's rep for, uh, reps for comments. Two of Campbell's co-trustees, Bianca Helmich and Ver Veronica Chow, were also barred from serving as trustees for nine and four years, respectively. The Charity Commission's investigation found Helmich received um, over $388,000 uh, $388, $388, in consultancy fees, which were unauthorized by the commission. The commission noted Fashion for Relief failed to manage partnerships with two charities, Save the Children Fund, just the name, girl, Save the Children Fund, and they say y'all failed to manage partnerships with two charities, Save the Children Fund, and the Mayor's Fund for London. The commission brought in, uh, in interim managers to make outstanding payments to the charities, totaling um, about 400 or over $460,000, girl. <sighs> Naomi spoke. She talked about it. She ain't running from it. Let's listen to what Miss uh, Campbell had to say. 
Oh, who is this? This is what she had to say. Girl, Naomi said, I don't know what y'all talking about, baby. <laughs> Naomi said, I... <laughs> baby, girl, Nene said, I don't know what y'all talking about, baby. I don't know what you're talking about. I ain't got nothing to do with it. <laughs> this is what she had to say. Here we go. Found out today about the findings, and I'm extremely concerned. And we are investigating on our side. As I was not in control of my charity, I put the control in the hands of a legal lawyer. And so we are investigating to find out what and how. As I, everything I do and every penny I ever raise goes towards charities. Just Listen, we know that sometimes we hear stories all the time about these, about people just slapping their names on certain things and they really don't have anything to do with it. Um, or making it seem as though they're in control of something they really not they're really not in control. However, that's even more of a reason for you to make sure that if you're going to be associated with whatever you're going to be associated with, honey, you know what's going on, the ins and outs, girl. You need to know, girl, who in control of what because when it all come crumbling down, baby. They're not going to go. Let me say it's it's just like a it's just kind of like a regular job. It's kind of like if you're a manager at a clothing store, say Nordstrom. When the stuff goes down, they don't go to the sales associates. That's who they go to. They go to the store manager. And then the store manager goes to the department managers. And then the department manager has a meeting with the uh, assistant managers. And then they go down to, you know what I'm saying? So it's always going to start at the top and trickle its way on down. So Naomi, honey, you're associated with these things. And I don't think these, girls, <laughs> when I tell you, baby, it is going down. In Hollywood, girl, they is going, going to they are coming. Up. <laughs> every day I wake up, girl, what are y'all getting in trouble? <laughs> every day I get, girl, every day I wake up, somebody get barred, somebody girl, getting investigated, somebody going to jail, girl, they having press conferences, girl, they is on y'all asses. Like white on rice, baby. Oh, baby, it's on and popping. They coming after y'all. They are coming after y'all. Mm. I wonder what Riri got to say. Riri, you think <laughs> Riri? Somebody get Riri on the line. Rihanna, somebody get Robin on the line. Robin, you think Naomi lying? <laughs> I know she. I know. I know. I know she having a kiki session right now, <laughs> girl. You wanted to go out on the concrete the other day talking about girl. It's not demure. No, it's not demure to steal a heifer, <laughs> girl. Y'all remember the video? Her and Law out. They Law said they wasn't being shady towards Rihanna. But we thought that they were. Maybe we just being messy. Talking about it's not demure. It's not mindful. You know, Riri, Riri was kind of was kind of like not half naked, but you know, she going. I guess she's trying to get into her sexy again. I think she had her boobs out. <laughs> it's not demure. It's not demure to steal. <laughs> it's not mindful to take money from organizations with the name children in the title. Huh. Allegedly. Anyway. <sighs> Do y'all remember British? We talked about British and Lorenzo before. Well, anyways, listen to this. This is according to the Neighborhood Talk. So, birds of a feather. Former basketball player Lorenzo Gordon, fa uh, Gordon faces up to ten, faces ten years in prison after pleading guilty to pandemic fraud just one year after his ex fiance British Williams was sentenced to four years in prison for fraud. So neighbors get into this former professional basketball player and ex basketball wives uh, cast member Lorenzo Gordon has pled guilty to fraud for misusing pandemic related funds. What's even crazier is that this is happening about a year after his ex fiance British Williams was sentenced uh, on 15 counts of fraud. The 41 year old pled guilty uh, to theft of more than $250,000 and pandemic related uh, funds. Gordon admitted to applying for multiple paycheck protection program loans, and in addition to that, three economic in, uh, injury disaster loans. Gordon allegedly received $107,000 in PPP loans and uh, over $165,000 in EIDL loans. On top of that, as being uh, reported, he got money advances. 
According to reports, he applied for the money under several business uh, names, including Logo Fitness LLC, Elite 50 Basketball Training LLC, and Elite Health and Fitness Company LLC. If he is found guilty, Gordon faces up to 10 years in prison and a $250,000 fine. As previously stated, this is coming just one year after his ex fiance was found guilty of committing fraud and sentenced to four years in prison. She was ordered to pay restitution in the amount of $565,000. Neighbors, it looks like birds of a feather really do flock together. Thoughts? That's what they say. All I'm going to say is this, girl. You know, I have a belief that, girl, when it's a couples, especially when it's couples, no shade to the couples. It's just hard for me to believe that when things, when couples are together, like they were a couple, as we, as you know, it's hard for me to believe that when things like this happen, that the other person is not involved or they don't know. You gonna have to, you gonna have to really tell me some stuff like Erica Jane on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills who came into a situation where this man was already wealthy. The houses, the cars, all that was already there. She, he just plucked her off of the whole pole, of the whole stroll. Hello? You know what I'm saying? But when you have situations like this, when you have situations, no shade, like your homegirl Phaedra and Apollo, when you have situations like, you know, even Coach Shaw and Jen Shaw, who's been together since college. Now, he was not convicted or charged of anything. So clearly it was all on Jen, but it's just hard for me to understand how you can be with somebody, grow with somebody. This lifestyle was not, you did not have this lifestyle and you met this person. And y'all don't know, y'all don't be having no idea what be going on. You was that blind in the relationship? I know some people are gonna be like, yeah, sometimes people really just don't know. Okay, girl, I guess. Anyways, it is what it is. It's gonna be what it's gonna be. <sighs> they have a daughter. Girl, can you imagine that little girl, that little girl's mother in jail and father in jail? No, I'm sorry. Can you imagine a little girl's mother in prison and father in prison? Over something that they could control. Like Kim Porter couldn't control that. Put, let me shut up. Girl. Kim Porter passed away. Lorenzo and British, y'all was just scammers who got caught. And now your daughter won't have a mother or a father at least for a year or two or however long British is going to be in jail. And then Lorenzo go to jail. All because, girl, y'all want to live these over-the-top, luxurious lifestyles that y'all know y'all can't afford. <laughs> wanting to stump for the people, wanting to stump for the... I mean, do you, know how much of a, do you know how much of a psycho you have to be to do this stuff and get, your, and, and get on TV? You British was really on Basketball Wives. You know, Lorenzo was really on Basketball Wives. Jen Shaw was really down to Housewives of um, Salt Lake City. Tom Girardi was really down to Beverly Hills. Girl, Apollo was really down to Real Housewives of Atlanta. Girl, crazy. <laughs> you know, I, I would I would never understand a scammer who. It's visible. I, in my head, I would think that if you know you are scamming, girl, you don't have no Instagram. You ain't got no, girl, you ain't got no Twitter. You ain't got no MySpace, Black Planet, Christian Mingle, Jack, Grinder, Scruff. You ain't got no YouTube channel. You ain't got nothing, girl. You just live your life on the low. Your friends are this, are this big, right? You got about two or three friends. Y'all be getting all on the internet, your girl showing everything. And y'all know we be counting y'all money. <laughs> at least I do. Girl, where they work at? Girl, they look like they living good. Oh, she got a nice house. Especially y'all gonna especially y'all gonna get on these reality TV shows. I'll be wanting to know. Girl, she living good. What she do? What he do? What they work? Oh. They work where? And they live in a, that, girl, that house is 25,000 square feet. Girl, what she, what he do? 
Girl, did you see what she had on? Girl, Miss Thing had a $300,000 Hermes bag. Mm. Girl, that's me. Girl, that's good. When it, when, it don't so, when, it, when it don't make no sense, I'll be over here like, girl, that don't... What she work? And what he do? Girl, like Coach Shaw. Coach Shaw, he a coach. Girl, what? And what she, what, what she work? Girl, that lady, Jen used to walk into... Jen used to have stores open for her. You know how much money you spend at a store for them to open up a store just for you? It was like some little boutique store in Vegas. I think they went to Vegas. Like one time the Kardashians, uh, Chloe took Chris shopping, I think at Saks Fifth. But of course we know they're filthy rich. But again, even with a boutique store, for them to just open up the store for you, you have to be one. You have to be uh, like at the top of the girl. <laughs> you have to be in my head. I would think you have to be at the top of the list. <sighs> Anyways, girl, let's move on. So instead of like writing one of those big long paragraphs where people issue statements, I figure I'd rather just talk about it. I want to address this lawsuit. And my greedy, shysty ass law firm, Prince Lobo, that I hired. First of all, I paid y'all a million dollars. A million dollars. I think a little over a million dollars. But this this invoice of what y'all suing me for put y'all well over a million dollars. And I didn't even go to trial. I pled guilty. I pled guilty to something I had minor a little involvement in in the first place and i only had my name on five pages of discovery so out of the million or whatever pages of discovery that y'all read because that's what y'all want to do so y'all could charge me by the hour my name was only on five pages of this shit only on five pages of discovery i went into the courtroom pleading guilty and i was able to walk home walk out of the courtroom and be with my family remain free based off of mitigation and for those who don't know what mitigation is mitigation is basically uh an argument based upon who i am as a person the community work and the stuff that i do in the community basically i went into the courtroom and was able to walk home free based off who i am as a person my lawyers ain't even really do shit you know how to like when people catch cases and they beat the case and they take pictures with their lawyer like oh thank you i didn't have to do that because I pled guilty to the shit. I didn't have to go to trial. And my argument was who I am as a person and the likeliness that that'll never happen again. Glad this shit over with so I could speak on it. I don't know how to do fraud. I was fighting a case for conspiracy to commit wire fraud and identity theft. I ain't never did fraud a day in my fucking life. I went to jail for paying a nigga hundreds of thousands of dollars to do shit for goods and services. When I was 18 years old, 18, 19 years old, paying a nigga 20,000 for a jet, 15,000 for a crib. Thousands of dollars for cars, rental cars and shit. And he doing that shit illegally. That ain't had nothing to do with me. I had money already. I wasn't going to steal from people. I wasn't stealing people's credit cards and taking their identity to go further my career. I will misinform me that I would even be debanked. That I was going to get debanked and banks wouldn't even allow my business anymore after I fought this case. So on top of that, I had to get big ass checks sent back to me and then figure out which bank going to take me so I could put the money that I already have in the bank and I can't even make no new money. I got millions of dollars in deals on the table right now that I got to figure out what I'm going to do with the checks that I have already and where they going to send these new wires because y'all misinformed me that I would be, that I would lose business and be deep bank behind this shit. So not only did y'all charge me, y'all misinformed me, y'all misrepresented me and y'all took advantage of me. And y'all think just because I'm young and black and successful and I'm an artist that I'm uneducated. Like, I don't know right from wrong. I should have never paid a million dollars to y'all in the first place. Everybody on my team advised me to sue y'all for excessive billing. Y'all suing me because y'all greedy and money hungry. And y'all feel like I owe y'all 230000 which I don't feel like I owe y'all shit. But if y'all would have reached out to my team before issuing this public lawsuit, we could have, we would have paid y'all. We would have got to the bottom of it. I just wanted to speak about it publicly because people get the wrong message and they get you know what I'm saying? Shit go through loopholes and people would look like, oh yeah, I, I, I stole or I'm in the wrong. I honestly, 
am not in the wrong. Y'all took advantage of me. I paid y'all a million dollars. I didn't go to trial. It's people who fight murder charges that didn't have to pay a million dollars to their attorney. I knew I had no involvement in this case. Y'all know I don't do fraud. I never done fraud in my life. And I'm suffering from this shit because I didn't tell on a nigga because I didn't snitch. That's the reason why I'm fighting this case. I'm not going to run off on a $230,000 bill. I already paid y'all a million dollars. And I didn't even know that y'all was about to issue this public lawsuit. And I'm innocent. <laughs> I didn't even do shit. Listen. You can't never really trust a scammer. <laughs> you know if they're lying or not. The thing is, a broken clock is right twice a day. So there's a possibility he could very well be telling the truth. He didn't go to jail, but that doesn't mean anything. People, Innocent people get don't go to jail all the time. I mean, guilty people, innocent people. Guilty people don't go to jail all the time. One, of course, he tried to pull the black card. Every time a nigga get caught up into some shit, they always want to pull the black card. Sit your ass down and be still, then we ain't even got to worry about having this conversation. That's one. Two, him saying that if they would have gotten in contact with him or his team, they just would have paid it or they could have had a discussion. If you feel as though you don't owe the money, why are you paying something that you don't owe? And then three, his, this loyalty that y'all have to the streets, uh, not snitching, right? He doesn't, he wasn't going to snitch on nobody. Sir, you have three kids from what I understand. I think that is a whole lot more important to be there for your kids than to take the chance of possibly going to jail because you don't want to be a rat or tell on somebody. Girl, y'all allegiance to the streets is mind boggling to me. I will never understand it. It's not for me to understand. I completely I'm okay with that. Like I always say, everybody ain't meant for the streets, girl. That's why they made the sidewalk. Well, I actually didn't say that. I got that from, I forgot who I got that from, but I didn't, I, that, that wasn't really me. But I love saying it, girl. So, girl, everybody ain't meant for the street. That's why they made the sidewalk for the girls like me, okay? Y'all go at it. Have fun. I'm going to be over here. Like I said, I don't know if he's telling the truth. I don't know. Um, at this point, it is what it is. Um, he's a free man. Um, you pulling the black card ain't gonna do nothing for me. You saying that you would pay, let, let me tell you something. I know I don't owe you nothing. I'm not gonna say if you just would have called me, I would have paid you. Girl, if you would have called me, I would have cussed your ass out, okay? Because I don't owe you nothing. <laughs> not if we could have just talked about it and I could have just paid you the money, no girl, if I know I don't owe you something you're not getting a penny from me <laughs> okay you have to take me to court and they're going to have to tell me I have to pay you and if I don't I'm going to jail <laughs> you, know, they, you know when they start mentioning jail I feel like it was something hanging from my hat when they start mentioning jail you know <laughs> if, you want me to get, if you want me to straighten up mention jail, jail, oh girl I'm mad. I have to get. I have to, I guess I just pay it. Um, what y'all think? You can never tell with the with, with people, especially people who is no shade. Everybody got to get it how they live. But you know, you never. You can never really tell with people who, you know, do all this scamming and fraud and all this other stuff. I got a. You know, I got a million dollar deals on the table. Girl, what they got to do? They overbilled me. If, if they didn't do shit, then why did you hire them, sir? I'm not saying that the lawyers didn't do anything, you know, out of order because they could have. They really could have billed that boy what, what he wasn't supposed to be billed, right? But don't try and downplay what those people did because if they didn't do nothing, you wouldn't have needed them. You could have just represented your damn self if that was the case. But now it's y'all ain't even do nothing. They, they, I got off because of the person that I am. Girl, they say you a scammer. <laughs> they say you really ain't got no money. 
Let's say you are here like the other rappers. And let's just call a thing a thing. I don't know a lot about these people, but I am starting to believe what I've been believing. These rappers may get on one song. <laughs> girl, they, may, they might make one song with Nicki or Jay-Z and all of a sudden, girl, they the richest in the world. We see private jets and the trains and the cars and the clothes and the houses. Girl, y'all ain't did that off no one or two songs. Y'all not living the way that y'all portray yourselves to live off one or two songs. Tell me, is G, is G Herbo this person who would just have these millions of dollars when he was 18 or 19? <laughs> it's a possibility that he got caught up into some stuff. He hung around the wrong people. He trusted the wrong people. <sighs> Girl, I don't even care. It is what it is. Like I said, girl, he's a free man, but don't try and act like the law firm didn't do nothing for you because if, that, if that's the case, you shouldn't have hired him in the first place. You could have just went to the court and represented yourself since you're just saying you got your own self out because I'm just a good person. I'm just a good person. Uh, 